Welcome to the KZJN News. Today we'll bring you news of a Republican bill to add FBI screening of refugees and the Obama threat that he'll veto the bill. More common from Sacramento. Today's KZJN Talking Points editorial, weather sports, and much more. From the Rademacher Hills to Bee Mountain and the mighty Sierras, Ridgecrest to Inyo Kern and China Lake, this is your news for the Indian Wells Valley with the KZGN News Crew. Hello, I'm Tom Winnick. Thanks for joining us for the news affecting Ridgecrest and the Indian Wells Valley. The latest in the manhunt for the terrorists responsible for the Paris attacks, the AP provides this report. The Belt and Jihad suspect of masterminding deadly attacks in Paris died along with his cousin in a police raid on a suburban apartment building, officials said Thursday. Paris prosecutor Francois Molina's office said 27-year-old Aboud was identified based on skin samples, but authorities did not know how he died. His body was found in the apartment building targeted in the chaotic and bloody raid in the Paris suburb of St. Denis on Wednesday. Three police officials say a woman who died in the raid was Abu's cousin. One said she is believed to have detonated a suicide vest after a brief conversation with the police officers. The official confirmed an audio recording punctuated by gunshots in which an officer asked, Where is your boyfriend? And she responded angrily, He is not my boyfriend. Then loud bangs are heard. The exact relationship between Abood and the woman was not clear. The bodies recovered in the raid were badly mangled, with a part of the woman's spine landing on a police car, complicating formal identification, according to one of the officials. The officials all spoke on condition of anonymity because they were not permitted to divulge details of the investigation. Another report offers this news. Disturbing new evidence has surfaced that migrants from ISIS-controlled areas of Syria may be using America's lax border control to try and sneak into the United States. Just this week, at least 13 Syrians have been apprehended trying to gain le- illegal access into the United States, and some are fighting-age men who were using fake passports and false identities. Investigations into whether they apprehended Syrians may have terror links are ongoing. Eight Syrian migrants were caught near the border town of Laredo, Texas, this week. Border agents told BreitbartNews.com on the condition of anonymity. The National Border Patrol Council, which represents thousands of border control agents, has also confirmed that Syrian migrants have been caught trying to enter the United States. In more news from the Associated Press about a GOP bill to increase the level of refugee screening, we get this report. The White House on Wednesday threatened a presidential veto of House Republican legislation aimed at increasing screening for Syrian and Iraqi refugees before they enter the United States, calling new requirements in the bill untenable. The legislation, which sets high hurdles for refugee admissions, including FBI background checks and individual sign-offs by top federal officials, would provide no meaningful additional security for the American people instead serving only to create significant delays and obstacles in the fulfillment of a vital program that satisfies both humanitarian and national security objectives, the White House said. President Barack Obama would veto the legislation if it reaches his desk, the statement concluded. Republican leaders, eager to respond quickly to Friday's terror attacks in Paris, had described the bill as a middle ground approach. It institutes tough new screening requirements, but steers clearer of demands from some Republicans, including presidential candidates, for religious questionings or a complete end to the U.S. refugee program. It is scheduled for a House vote today. This is the common sense, and it's our obligation, Speaker Paul Ryan of Wisconsin said on the House floor ahead of the veto threat. If the intelligence and law enforcement community cannot certify that a person presents no threat, then they should not be allowed in. In the Senate, lawmakers emerging from a closed-door briefing with an administration officials Wednesday night said Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein and Republican Senator Jeff Flake planned to introduce a bill that would restrict visas for any individual who had been in Iraq or Syria in the past five years. Senate action, though, is not likely until after Congress's Thanksgiving recess, and with little chance for the bill to become law, several conservatives said the real action could come on a pending must-pass spending bill that has to clear by December 11th in order to keep the government running. Some want to use that bill to cut off funding for the refugee program, foreshadowing another potential government shutdown fight. Now stay with us for today's KGN Talking Points editorial when we come back.
Thanks for staying with us. Now it's time for the 98th KZGN News Talking Points editorial. Here's today's topic. Seems the Syrian refugee problem is now splitting the country. Well, last Tuesday I did an editorial titled asking if anyone thinks Obama has lost touch with reality concerning the plan to allow Syrian refugees into the country. I said that I'd really like to know your thoughts on this. I'm going to share many of the comments in this editorial, even though there are many I do not agree with. The main concern of many people was the potential that ISIS would use these flows of people to export their own soldiers. Obama and other European nations said that they were screening everyone to make sure they aren't terrorists. Well, now the French have determined that one of the bombers did make it into France via this mass migration of refugees. And even after this proof, some people still agree with Obama and think it's okay. Wow! I am totally against this. I have no faith that anyone could do a sufficient job of screening these refugees. And all it takes is just one to get through. Just one terrorist getting through can be deadly, just like we saw in France. And the sympathy ploy about us being mean to women and children. Well, yesterday when the French broke into an apartment to make an arrest, there was a woman with an explosive suicide vest that blew herself up instead of being arrested. And talked to soldiers that were involved in Iraq wars about children setting up improvised explosive devices to kill Americans. So enough with the sympathy guilt trip. And one person asked what I would do for these refugees. Wally well, said, no one was offering any solutions. However, my guess is that for a person that just wants to leave things the way they are, they would oppose any suggested solution unless it came from Obama. But I'll provide my recommendation. I would support the U.S. providing financial help for housing, food, and support for refugees in any other country but on American soil. Just as we treat other immigrants, then they can apply for entrance into the United States in accordance with normal immigration laws. So that's pretty simple. And as I reported in the earlier news segment, the Congress is recommending deeper background checks by the FBI. But that reasonable middle-of-the-road recommendation is also being vetoed by Obama. Anyway, now here's some comments, and many people made multiple comments. First I'll post those that disagreed with me. You be the judge of their points. Wally said, I agree with his, meaning Obama's, decision. As to the refugees, there is no good answer. What would Tom do with them? Let them all die? That makes us no better than terrorists ourselves. Life is risk, but how you live matters. Compassion is not weakness. Susie said, Tom, you still continue to put the president down. It gets old real fast. I can see you have no respect whatsoever for him or the office. Scott said, there is clearly a difference between the animal terrorists of ISIS and civilian refugees fleeing them. I wonder if Tom supports gun control of some sorts for the refugees coming in. Well, I replied to Scott about whether he is confident in the government's background check system. Scott replied, Yes, I'm pretty confident. Certainly not running around with my hair on fire like you are in your editorial. In the middle of the debate, we had this comment from Phil. We have no business being involved in serious civil war at any level. There are no good guys fighting. We have no real allies there, except maybe the Kurds, and even then not all of them are good guys. Even the least extreme groups are repugnant to everything we value, and supporting them is a repudiation of everything we claim to hold dear. We don't have to take sides in every civil war. Keep our gunpowder dry for a real emergency. We have real enemies across the Pacific. Don't squander our power and our wealth on some civil war here everyone fighting is a bad guy. Let them bleed. Save our power for when it's really needed. Supporting my position, Joyce replied to Susie about her claim I always am bashing Obama. Well, a Republican president gets respect from you. Will you not put that president down? All I heard was Bush bashing. Did you also ask for respect for the president? I'm asking because I don't know. Christina provided an assortment of comments. We have homeless children and homeless veterans. We are not a bottomless pit of money. We need to prioritize and save our own children. If we can't take care of our own, how can we expect to be taken care of others from another country? Wally added, I'm not going to argue, Chris. If we can spend billions to kill people, we can afford to feed a few kids. Assuming we even need to do so. To which Chris replied, Really? 
We are paying for undocumented citizens to get a college education. Are you kidding me right now? When the discussion turned to how we would pay for it, Wally said, the GOP didn't worry about money when they went to Iraq or Afghanistan. Find a way, Chris. Besides, you don't even know how much, if anything, the refugees will cost the taxpayers. He went on to say this was a philosophical issue Tom presented. You don't have to like the answer. To which Chris made this excellent reply. Hmm, the refugees won't cost us money. Where will they live? Or do we plan to throw them on the streets to fend for themselves? How will they eat? Or do we intend to let them starve? Where will they work? Or are we going to give them welfare until we taxpayers pay for their education and trade schools? And what will we do about those who are U.S. citizens who are not given these special opportunities because they are U.S. citizens? You're right. It is philosophical and moral. Sacrifice one of your own for a stranger. The answer is quite clear. Focus on our issues and cleaning our own house because you can't save the world when your own house is a mess. That was Christina talking. Ray asked, I wonder how many have managed to come to the U.S. from the southern border. I am certain that not everyone who jumps the wall speaks only Spanish. And for part of the discussion, Scott wanted to deflect the discussion to gun control. But that was not the topic of my editorial, so I felt there was no reason to start up with that again when the topic is questioning Obama's grasp of reality concerning refugees. But I'll answer him as well. Scott, only citizens and legal residents are allowed to buy guns in America, so refugees would not be allowed to buy a gun. So no new laws would have to be written to stop them from buying a gun. And if they do eventually get legal resident status, I would be required to follow federal and California law in selling the gun to that person. Anyway, I thank everyone for their comments. I just don't understand why people would risk our security to potential terrorists. I by no means declare all the Syrian refugees are terrorists. They're not. However, I have no faith in the Obama administration properly checking these people out. And then we read that Republicans have proposed a bill to include FBI screening of the refugees, and Obama threatens to veto the bill. So how does that go with the Obama plan that will thoroughly screen these refugees? When now he specifically is trying to limit the screening. This is crazy. Women kill with suicide vests. Children have been used to kill American soldiers too. And answer this. If there was no fear of possible terrorists in this huge group of refugees, why isn't a single Muslim Middle East nation taking on any of these refugees? Why is the Western countries that have to carry the load? Like Chris said in one of her comments in the discussion group, she said, Another point to be made regarding refugees is we don't have enough money for the VA that is supposed to care for our vets. They have to fight for anything more serious than a cold, yet we have money to support this. This nation's priorities are really messed up. Well, I agree with Chris, and that really is part of the problem between the conservatives and liberals of this country. Priorities. When the Democrat presidential candidates answered when questioned, what is the biggest enemy of the U.S., and they answered things like global warming, the NRA, and Republicans, and then the Republicans answered to a similar question, ISIS and the Islamist terrorists. Of course, as a result of the Paris attacks, now the Democrat candidates answered slightly differently by saying, the terrorists and jihadists are the problem, but following the Obama declared political correctness wording, they would not use the term Islamist terrorist. It was so funny to watch them describe a terrorist using every word they could come up with, but still just not able to call them Islamist terrorists. It has just been reported that eight Syrian immigrants were caught near the border town of Laredo, Texas this week. Border agents told Breitbart.com on the condition of anonymity. The National Border Control Council which represents thousands of border control agencies, also has confirmed that Syrian immigrants have been caught trying to enter the United States. And just today, a left-leaning polling group released this poll. A Bloomberg Politics poll released Wednesday found that 53% of American adults don't want Syrian refugees resettled in the U.S., while 28% say Obama administration should proceed with his plan to accept 10,000 refugees next year without religious screening. So only 28% support the Obama plan. Again, if you'd like to get in on the discussion, go to the IWB discussion group on Facebook. In conclusion, 
Wake up, America. Wake up, Obama. Only 28% of the people you represent and swore to defend against all enemies, foreign and domestic, support your plan. These barbaric animal terrorists do not want to get along with us. They want us and our way of life dead. We have an opportunity to protect our people from terrorist attacks on our soil. If you agree with me, start letting your elected officials know, especially the White House. I'm Tom Wendick, and that's what I think. I'd like to know what you think. If you have any comments about this editorial, or would like to discuss or recommend a topic, I'd like to hear from you. Please email them to info at kzgn.net. Now stay with us for weather and sports when we come back. Thanks for staying with us. Let's go to Lane for the weather. Thank you, Tom. From the National Weather Service, a wet day is in store for much of the eastern seaboard, as a frontal system brings rain and a chance of thunderstorms from Florida north to much of New England. Rainfall amounts of 1 to 2 inches are expected, with locally higher amounts possible. Rain and high elevation snow is expected from the Pacific Northwest to the Northern Rockies. Temperatures across the nation. Carolina's at 69, Georgia at 69, Arkansas at 67, Northern Texas at 53, Arizona at 65, and Los Angeles at 80. And for us locally, tonight, clear with a low around 41, southwest wind, 5 miles per hour. Friday, sunny with a high near 72, east wind, 5 miles per hour. Friday night, mostly clear with a low around 43, north wind, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Saturday, sunny with a high near 68, east northeast wind, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Saturday night, mostly clear with a low around 41, east northeast wind, 5 to 10 miles per hour. And Sunday, sunny with a high near 69, north northwest wind, 5 miles per hour. And that is your forecast for the IWV. Now back to Tom. Thanks, Lane. And now here's Tom Hecht with sports. And a very pleasant Thursday evening to everyone. Let's start with uh, the Burroughs High School Coaches Show tonight. 7 o'clock, 12.40 a.m., listen to Todd Mather. He'll be talking about the big game tomorrow night, and he'll also be talking about last week's win against Barstow. Don't forget, tonight, Todd Mather, 7 o'clock on 12.40 a.m. All right, let's talk about the quarterfinal game on Friday. The first time in six years that Burroughs has been in the quarterfinals, they will be playing against a very good team, La Quinta High School, over in the Palm Desert area. The two teams played five years ago a first-round game at La Quinta, with La Quinta winning that game. It was a good come-from-behind win for La Quinta. It was a very close game. All right, Major League Baseball, Jake Arrieta gets a Cy Young Award nom- winner for the uh, National League. He was 22-6 and six this year for the Cubs with a 177 ERA. He won 11 of his last 12 starts and was very good in the playoffs also. Now he outdid Zach Greinke and Clayton Kershaw, the Dodgers, but all three of those guys could have easily deserved this award. Now over in the American League, Dallas Keuchel of the Astros wins it. He had a 2.48 ERA. He won 19 games this season. And he had 216 strikeouts. A very good year helped the Astros win the division. All right, in the NBA, the Houston Rockets have fired Kevin McHale. Uh, McHale was 4-7 and seven this year. Hard to believe they did that. McHale did a great job last year, got him to the semifinals of the NBA. They knocked off the Clippers in five games and really has done a very good job in Houston. But it's what have you done for me lately. That's kind of the theme. And unfair as it is, out he goes. J.B. Bickerstaff will take over as the interim coach. If that name sounds familiar, his dad, Bernie Bickerstaff, was an NBA head coach, also as an assistant for the Lakers. All right, uh, winners on Wednesday from the NBA, San Antonio, Portland, Atlanta, and Boston. Best record so far after 12 games in the NBA? Golden State Warriors, 12-0. and Worst record? The 76ers, 0-12. All right, tonight, Thursday night football, not much of a game, kind of two dogs struggling, maybe, we could say. 2-7 Tennessee is at Jacksonville. 
who is three and six. The Jags, though, better this season. The Titans, not better this season. They just fired their coach uh, about two weeks ago. All right, the Patriots are nine and zero, best record in the NFL, and the Panthers also nine and zero. Two teams left that are undefeated in the NFL. Last week, Denver fell as one of the undefeated, and the Bengals fell on Monday night to the Texans. Surprise there. That's your sports for this Thursday night. I'm Tom Heck for KZGN. So that's the news for today. All of us at KZGN TV know you have a choice in what you watch for your news. We all thank you for choosing KZGN TV, Ridgecrest's only locally owned community TV station. Now stay tuned for Ridgecrest Talk coming up next.